ready to start our special session today. And uh, we're gonna call the meeting to order. And uh, honorable members of city council, in accordance with the Virginia Beach City Code 2-21, and by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Virginia Beach, I hereby call for a special formal session of the Virginia Beach City Council. Tuesday, May 14th at 6 p.m., City Council Chambers, Building 1, Second Floor, 2401 Courthouse Drive. The purpose of this special formal session is to allow the City uh, 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 Council to consider the adoption of the fiscal year 2024-2024 25 resource management plan, operating budget, capital improvement budget, and related ordinance as listed in the published agenda. Citizens may comment earlier in person or virtually. If you would like to speak in person, please call the city clerk office at 757-385-4303 to sign up. If you wish to make comments virtually on an item, please follow the two-step process provided below, registered at the WebEx uh, address provided, or register with the city uh, clerk's office by calling 757-385-4303 or via email at abarnes.vv.com prior to 5 o'clock on today. The special session will be broadcast on cable TV, Virginia Beach Gov, and Facebook Live. Citizens are encouraged to submit their comments ahead uh, prior to the uh, formal session, uh, session at uh, citycouncilvbgov.com. Okay, at this point, do we have any speakers? Mayor, we have two speakers. Sorry. You know, if I could just say, in terms of speaker's policy, you'll have three minutes, and we just ask for civility and mutual respect. Thank you. The first speaker is Diana Howard. And the next speaker is Elaine Fackety, which I don't see her here. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. How are you all on this rainy day? Uh, I know you're all going to be voting for this budget tonight. There's no alternative budget to, uh, to look at. Let's just be clear. We are raising taxes tonight 4.6 cents. We are not cutting taxes. Um, I appreciate that you asked the city manager to look at what a revenue neutral budget would look like. And of course, none of us could go with that. Uh, getting rid of 300 positions would not have been good. I do appreciate that you went through the exercise of uh, eliminating positions that you couldn't fill and putting them with positions that you could fill and prioritizing them, but you still did add 37 positions to the budget. I think we could do better. I think the city manager was looking for you to do more than just ask him to do the heavy lifting. You could have all looked at the priorities instead of looking for your priorities to get in the budget you could have looked for the residents' priorities to get in the budget because they're the ones that are suffering with the not being able to pay their rent or pay their mortgage or deciding what they're going to buy with the 24% increase in inflation. We've had 16% more bankruptcies. And so asking people to pay more in real estate taxes, and I know we need to diversify the economy and find money you know, in other sources and everything. But until we do that, you need to do the hard thing. You need to make the choices and eliminate things from the budget. Do we really need to spend 17 million more on sports tourism? Do we really need to spend $4 million to design a park that we can't afford to build? Do we really need to spend $11 million on Teslas to send uh, tourism people from one hotel to another hotel or to an event. I mean, how many times have I asked you to give us half of the amusement tax, which would have been $4 million. You did find a way to repurpose that for something else. You added another $7 million already to the budget. I mean, I'm sure you could have gotten rid of some of the things you wanted to spend money on, and that would have helped. Thanks. Thank you for coming. 
Mayor, we had one additional speaker, Elaine Feckety. I do not see her. So that's all the speakers, sir. Okay, thank you. And at this point, I will ask uh, Vice Mayor Wilson to uh, you know, read the reconciled proposal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> number A, number big A, little A, uh, the FY 2024-25 operating budget. Number one is the ordinance to appropriate three, uh, $3,616,233, well, three billion six hundred. I have to relook at this number, $3,616,233,616, consisting of um, $678,967,053 in inter-fund transfers, $297,883,829 for internal service funds, and $2,639,388,000 Six hundred thirty-nine million three hundred eighty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-four in operating and operations for fiscal year beginning July first, twenty twenty-four, and ending June thirtieth, twenty twenty-five. Number two is an ordinance to establish the tax levy on real estate for FY twenty twenty-five. Number three is the ordinance to establish the tax levy on personal property and machinery and foods and tools for calendar year twenty twenty-five. Number four is the ordinance to authorize the city manager to submit the FY 2024-25 annual funding plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, which is HUD. Number five is the ordinance to amend city code section 35-2464 and 35-67 Ray exemption or deferral of real estate taxes for elderly or disabled persons. Number six is the ordinance to amend city code section 31-39 for waste collection fee, Ray increase the waste collection fee for such service commencing July 1st, 2024. Number seven is the ordinance to amend the city code section 35.3-12. Ray, they extend the sunset date to July 1st, 2037 for Gills Cove Area Dredging Special Service District. Number eight is an ordinance to amend city code section 35-6. 35-6.1, 35-9, and 35-37 raise the date. Penalties and interest are imposed upon delinquent real estate and personal property tax bills and or installments. Number nine is the ordinance to amend city code section 35-182 regarding the change the dedication for the tourism investment program tip fund and dedicate a portion of the amusement tax to funding for the arts and culture. Number uh, B, FY 2024-25 capital budget. Number one is the ordinance to adopt the FY 2024-25 through FY 2029 through 30 capital improvement program, the CIP, and appropriate $418,531,838 rate, the FY 2024-25 capital budget, subject to funds being provided from various sources set forth herein. Number two is the ordinance to authorize the issuance of general obligation public improvement bonds in the minimum, the maximum amount of $71,116,108 for various public facilities and general improvements. Number three is the ordinance to authorize the issuance of stormwater utility system revenue bonds in the maximum amount of $6,982,612. Number four is the ordinance to authorize the issuance of water and sewer system revenue bonds in the maximum amount of $28,746,000. Number five is a resolution to affirm the city's commitment to fund the lo locality shore, uh, share of projects and provide signature authority for projects under agreement with the Virginia Department of Transportation, as VDOT. And number six is the ordinance to extend the sunset date to June 30th, 2025, providing ordinance number 3625 the allowance to allow the completion of the city's second disparity study. I uh, move to approval, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Mrs. Henley. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to uh, add, add a friendly amendment to the uh, reconciliation letter, uh, which I think is a part of all of this that we're doing. Uh, <clears throat> last week in our discussion, uh, for item five, we talked about the report that the city manager will uh, provide to the council uh, using the ITA plan as a guide uh, to begin development of that area. And I'm just 
want to make certain that we want to actually begin the implementation, not just do another report. So I am asking that we add uh, this wording to that item in the reconciliation letter. Uh, the city manager shall provide a report to city council by October 1st, 2024, using the interfacility traffic area and vicinity master plan as the guide that shall include an implementation plan an estimated cost to develop the ITA and vicinity in terms of recreational uses to enhance the existing Princess Anne Commons recreation area and to preserve <clears throat> the natural areas designated in the plan. Subsequent implementation can occur as existing funds are identified and available. And I would just like to add this wording. Uh, Maker, the motion accepts it. And I just want the public to know that this adds no funding right. to the budget. Um, our budget has to, all the revenues and the expenditures all have to balance. So you can't really, at this moment in time, add money or subtract money. It has to all, everything is printed and gone to print. So, but this changes none of that. Correct. And, and I would just make a few comments after the motion is on the floor. Uh -huh. I put the motion forth. We've got it. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Thank well, you. Okay. It was a friendly amendment. I said yes, and you need to say yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to make a, a couple of comments <clears throat> because I've had so much to uh, <clears throat> say about this ITA, but I, I think it's such a, a fantastic area for the city and to actually begin implementing things. I just wanted to uh, recommend a little bit of reading for you from some reports that have been done. Uh, this one is Conservation Plan for the Management and Protection of Natural Areas in the City of Virginia Beach that was done by uh, with the city and the National Virginia Na uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation in, in 1994. But there's this no. sentence in here. This Wait, does a, a wonderful job of looking at our natural resources citywide, but particularly in the area of the North Landing River. And this paragraph just really stands out. At the completion of the Natural Areas Inventory, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, Division of Natural Heritage, had records of 20 rare vertebrate species, seven, <clears throat> seven birds, five mammals, four reptiles, two amphibians, and two fish, 39 rare invertebrate species, 82 rare plant species, and two rare marses, mosses from the city of Virginia Beach. 19 natural communities of statewide significance were also identified. In this sentence, these findings rank the city first in terms of biodiversity significance of all localities in the Commonwealth located east of the Blue Ridge Geological Province. And I think we're seeing, hearing this from our citizens now uh, that, that we would really like to make sure we are preserving these <clears throat> species and these other wonderful things that we have in the city. And another report that was done at about the same time was of the West Neck Natural Area, which is on the other side of the ITA along the West Neck Creek. And it's a, a great uh, data collection, but one thing is in here that I've never seen before. It's a tree identification and location list of all the trees in that area. Uh, by the, their, their, uh, how, how big they are by inches and the, the crown by feet. And with all that we're talking about with trees now, I think this would be a wonderful project for maybe some of our, our young people to see how these trees are now. And we've done all of this work. And I think finally beginning to implement this will be a legacy project for this council. And I really appreciate your being willing to add this this uh, language so we can move forward. Thank you so much. Good. Is there any other discussion on this topic? Okay, any other discussion? Sabrina? Uh, you know, I'd also like to make a friendly amendment to this budget as well, uh, which would be to remove the wording that I brought up in the workshop. I, I brought that wording up in terms of items 15 and 16 to remove the wording that says future funding is contingent on further direction from the city from the city council 
following the report from the 90-day festival task force. And so I mentioned, um, of course, that you know Juneteenth is a uh, certainly a federal holiday, and funding for uh, this festival should be something that's in the budget that's ongoing because we celebrate it every year. Um, but I believe that this wording uh, is certainly uh, a potential hindrance to making sure that funding is available um, going to the future. Uh, and so I would like to offer an amendment to remove that wording from 15 and from 16. Um, and certainly I've attended the meetings for the task force and you know, I'm aware of the resolution um, that talks about prohibiting um, certain festivals from going forward. And I don't want the Juneteenth Festival for a federal holiday, uh, nor Pride, to be hindered um, by that wording. OK, is there a second or any other comments on this? Um, I do have a comment about that. Does that mean, I like where you want that removed, but does that mean it's designated to just one group or any other group that needs to do that festival based on what they bring forth can uh, do it? Or is it just one group? So it's, I, I can't speak to what the task force wants to do. You'd have to ask them. But what I'm saying here as it relates to a federal holiday, right. Juneteenth, right. it comes every year. Right. The funding should be there every year. And this wording, I believe, is a barrier uh, or could hinder that funding from going forward. And it's never been contingent upon um, a 90-day festival or any uh, commission for that matter. Um, so. so Mrs. Henley had hers in writing so we could all look at it ahead of time and see it. So this is sort of thrown at the last minute. And so I'm looking at the at number 15, and I really need you to read it the way you think it should read because I don't know what I'm voting on. What I said was, and I'm happy to repeat it, and for the record, I said it during the workshop, last week, and I thought that you would go back and consider that and remove it, um, and it wasn't done. So this is not last minute. This is something that you're well aware of, and I brought up to the body, uh, and what I just said was to remove that wording, and I just read it. Well, uh, and that, again, for, your, for you, I will re read it again, uh, but it is the last sentence on item 15 and item 16. And the last si sentence that starts with future and ends with task force. And so again, future funding is contingent on further direction from the city council following the report from the 90-day festival task force. So you just want I am asking to remove it as I asked for it to be removed uh, last week during our workshop, and I put that on record. Okay. So, so you just want that last sentence removed? Correct. Right. And you're not putting, okay. No. Well, I'll accept your friendly amendment. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's good. And then once again, this is another way to clarify. You know, once again, I think we value, we were the first city that really recognized Juneteenth. And uh, once again, this, you know, uh, deserves uh, uh, to be a legacy event. And uh, once again, I think the criteria that this uh, friendly amendment does not uh, involve any uh, change in financial status. Yeah, and I would like to also say, to validate what you said, we were the first in 2020 when everything was shut down. I got the call from mayor's office. He had a proclamation. And he wanted to have that even as a holiday. And that was 2020. I went over to culture affairs. So I just verify, yes, Virginia Beach was the first doing this. So will you accept the friendly amendment? Yes, I will accept it. That's the only reason I was asking her is in case 
some group comes up that wants to do that festival, but we're saying the money is available every year. Not to just one specific right. group, because you see in here it says one specific group. So that's what I was asking. It doesn't matter, at least funding is there. So if another group wants to partner with Land Foundation or some other group, they know they have a bucket of $100,000 annually that will help with this festival, because it is important. Thank you. And uh, Michael, what about uh, you know, you know, the event that you were? You know, well, um, Mayor, I just have a, a point of clarification, because the reconciliation letter removing the last sentence also does not um, address the, I guess my question is, as part of the friendly amendment, was it accepted? It's stated to provide a one-time contribution. So, Councilmember Wooten, did you also intend to remove that language? I, 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 if that would be supported, I would like to, yeah. but I, I wanted to keep it okay. as seamless as possible. Okay. Mark? Can, can, I, can I just clarify, you are tonight approving the fiscal year 24-25 budget and expenditures to be made in 24-25. Nothing that you do tonight can bind a future council as to what it will expend on any of these items in a future year. So whether it says one time or, I mean, it could propose spending, you know, X dollars every year for the next 100 years, but if council next year doesn't appropriate that money, it's not appropriated. Thank you. And, yeah, yeah. and that, so I think uh, Mr. Stiles just addressed that uh, question, and I, and I appreciate that. And I also want to just state that I, I, I appreciate Council Member Wooten's intent and um, for Juneteenth and for Hampton Rose Pride, as I know others do, because these are organizations, constituencies, communities of people who have not always had the opportunity to participate in partnership with the city in the way they do now. And so um, these discussions and efforts to empower and to prioritize and to um, celebrate this partnership is very important. And I appreciate the um, thoughtfulness that we, are, that we are working, approaching together in order to ensure that we don't return to a time when um, all people are not celebrated in Virginia Beach and um, and, enjoy, and have an opportunity to partner with our city. Great. Okay, anyone else? Rosemary? Well, this has been a very long budget season, and, and, and that was a good thing, because we, we started early with that retreat with the budget season where we had started later before, because some folks around this table wanted to start earlier, and, and our staff has just done an absolutely amazing job to take this $2.6 billion and boil it down so that all of us can understand it and the public can understand it. So they did a really wonderful job. And I think we've, we've tried hard to do a lot of things with this budget, including uh, <clears throat> the school's budget was, is fully funded. They had a, uh, a unanimous vote on their budget, and it's fully funded. And we've gotten really great news that the state's budget has been passed. And we're not totally sure of the... Uh, extra money from the state, but we think it's 17 to 18 million dollars in new money, so that's going to really help help the schools, which we, we're very grateful for. Um, there's a redirection for arts in here that there was, it's no new money, but it's just a redirection of some of the funds from, from the amusement tax. Um, we have 30 new firefighters, which we all read the uh, uh, report of how desperately our fire department was understaffed and they were working tremendous hours and was under a lot of pressure. So there's an addition, additional 30 firefighters. And uh, and we were also able to give a two cent reduction in the real estate rat rate to try to, you know, listen. I know it's not as much as everybody would have liked, but it's, it, it is a reduction in the rate. So we were happy about that as well. So this council has worked together so well. I'm very proud of the people sitting around this table and what we've been able to, to accomplish together. And I really look forward to this vote tonight. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Worth. But thank you, Mayor. Um, and I want to concur with Vice Mayor. I think uh, everyone's worked hard, especially the staff. Uh, and this budget, I will be voting for it, yes, tonight. 
It does accomplish a lot uh, for our city, it reflects our priorities, public safety, public education, maintaining the step plan with our city staff, stormwater bond referendum, protecting neighborhoods, and investing in economic development, tourism, and the arts. I am concerned about funding for education in our schools and, ma and maintenance in building new schools and funding existing programs. I'm concerned about the future funding for schools as well. This year's budget is austere. But reducing the mill rate to 97 cents could have been lower, perhaps, but, uh, but the cut in funding across all across the board would have been too much but if you subtract from if you, if you subtract from 97 cents uh, 4.1 cents for the bond referendum for public uh, for the stormwater you get to a neutral 93 cents and 93 and a half cents so from that standpoint it is a revenue neutral budget um, let's talk about the tip for a minute I wanted to talk about it last week I am the resort area uh, district six rep, so the tip is really very important to the uh, resort. But let me briefly talk about the history of what it's done for the for the city, the amphitheater, um, Sandler Center, the sports pack, the sports complex, uh, the soccer complex, the sports center at the oceanfront, seventy eight million dollars, uh, the convention center, of course, at the oceanfront. But it has delivered for our city for decades. Uh, and in this budget, it continues to deliver. It, it delivers to the resort area, and what the public really needs to know, it delivers for the rest of the city. $800,000 is in this budget, $800,000 this year and the next five years to the general fund to help balance this budget, not to be invested, but to help balance this budget. That's this year and the next five years. Also in this budget, $12 million for the PAC, for soccer, and for pickleball. Uh, and other needed infrastructure. And here's another fact that really dawned on me this week. 13 million tourists visit our city every year spending $3 billion. So meals taxes, hotel taxes, sales taxes, and real estate taxes all are paid into the general fund. TIP does take out of that, but a majority of those taxes, including real, all of the real estate taxes paid by hotels, restaurants, and tourist businesses go into the general fund which therefore reduces or has an impact on all of us across the city. So the TIP fund has done a lot for our city, uh, as a re again, for the resort. This year, it does a lot. Um, Atlantic Park, of course, Rudy Loop, infrastructure, Atl reimagined Atlantic Avenue. So the TIP is delivering for the oceanfront and for the rest of the city, and I hope to do that in the future. Thank you. Anyone else? You know, Michael. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I appreciate the comments that others have stated, and, and I'd just like to um, just take a few minutes to talk about why I'm also voting yes, in addition to um, many of the things that were shared by Vice Mayor Wilson and Mr. Remick. Um, I just want to highlight a few uh, items that I think are very important that are included in this budget. Um, the first is that this budget does fully fund the adopted budget from VB Schools, and um, shows and, and demonstrates our prioritization of public education in a strong educational system. Um, this budget includes a raise, a 3.5% raise for city employees that follows um, a really historic um, pay structure change that this council adopted two years ago um, and that included a step plan. This helps to ensure that the pub Virginia Beach public servants are paid and compensated fairly for their professional expertise and that we're able to attract and retain uh, the brightest and strongest workforce um, in the region and across the country. This budget includes additional 30 additional firefighters. Um, this will support the fire department workforce and will also, and most importantly, help ensure that Virginia Beach remains the safest city of our size in the country. And this budget also includes a historic investment in flood protection, which is incredibly important for this, the District 3 communities that have been um, disproportionately impacted by flooding, by recurrent flooding and stormwater flooding in Virginia Beach. And it's incredibly important to me and to the people we serve that Virginia Beach honors its commitment to flood protection in neighborhoods and all across our city. I also want to thank uh, members of this body and the community for responding 
to the needs that were articulated by Virginia Beach's creative community by creating a dedicated funding source for arts and culture and doing so without raising additional taxes. This is a historic and transformational change in the Virginia city of Virginia Beach's relationship with our creative communities. And it's something that will have a positive impact on our city for generations and for decades to come. And I'm very grateful to the members of this body for, um, for having the vision to accept this change and doing so without creating additional tax burdens. And I look forward to seeing the many positive impacts this change will have on our community. And finally, this budget includes a reduction in the real estate tax, which uh, demonstrates a response to the uh, economic conditions and inflationary pressures that Virginia Beach families are experiencing. And it also demonstrates the city of Virginia Beach's continued uh, sound financial management and responsible stewardship of taxpayer resources. So um, I will be voting yes tonight, and I thank you for your time. Okay, anyone else? Yes, yeah, so I was just going to um, echo what Councilman Pelushi mentioned about the arts. This is historic. We're all smiling because every city we've been visiting through the Hampton Rose Chamber, we hear about how important the arts have been to increasing things around for families that come in. So that is very important. We're happy about the 2% of real estate tax. And I also want to mention not only for our mayor and vice mayor, but our budget, Kevin over there and Patrick, who spent time to actively listen to what we had to say to them. Each time it was, okay, we'll go back and see what we can do. We'll look across, and that's not easy. So I would like to take a minute to thank you all for what you did. And I am voting yes. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's open the vote. The vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 1, you've approved the budget as submitted, noting the two friendly amendments by Council Members Henley and Wooten. Thank you. And once again, I think uh, I want to express my thanks also, uh, you know, to all the public that really got involved with the process, but to a council. And, you know, tonight we closed a chapter, but guess what? We opened a no new chapter tomorrow, you know, with the new challenges that we are going to be confronting. Um, once again, every city, every municipality in this great nation of ours is going through the same exercise that we do. You know, we as a city have been, we're confronted with COVID. We have been confronted with inflation like everybody else driving the costs. But once again, I think it, it is a good sign of collaboration. You know, it's often said that no, with, with budgets, not everybody walks 100% away 100% happy or 100% disappointed. It's a give and take, it's a tough one. But once again, I think we take a lot of pride that Virginia Beach is a very, very remarkable place that has endured over challenging times. And we're gonna have more challenging times. And once again, the ability to bring those new revenues in to confront the, our future obligations is going to be the new chapter that we're gonna have to be confronting. But once again, I thank everybody. I say thank you, God bless you, and you know, thank you for being part of a wonderful process. We are adjourned. <laughs>